It's been two years since I got Cattleyas from Sunset Valley Orchids. So how are they doing? Stay tuned to find out. Hi, welcome to Attainable Green. I'm Jess and today we're gonna to be talking about Cattleyas. Um, I have five Cattleyas to share with you today and I'm gonna show you how they have done in the past two years. Um, and we'll discuss a little bit more about how I grow Cattleyas. I grow all my cattleyas outdoors on a second story patio. It is kind of a southwest facing position and um, it gets a lot of heat and a lot of sun. So it gets a lot of bright light and a lot of heat. It's the hottest place I have and it's probably the best place I have um, to grow cattleyas. Uh, because of this location from winter to spring, these plants move from a slightly shaded location to a basically full sun spot. So um, a lot of these plants got a little bit of sunburn or a lot of sunburn in some of these cases when it did that transition. Um, and when it goes from fall to winter, it kind of goes from this nice sunny place to suddenly being shaded all the time. So those are the little tricky parts about this particular location for growing cattleyas. And I'm not sure how it will be long-term as to how the cattleyas will do. But for now, I'm just gonna show uh, what the plants are doing now. So first off, um, I'll go with my Lelia Zip. So I got two of these plants. Um, one ended up being a smaller, more compact variety, and the other one is more of a taller one. So using these two plants, you can kind of compare and see how um, the parents, the Milleri parent versus the Tenebrosa parent, how that is manifested in these two plants. Uh, the smaller, more compact one, the flowers actually look more like the Milleri parent. And also, um, it tends to have a little bit more heat tolerance. Um, the leaves um, get a lot of light, so they're pretty much purple at this point. Um, this plant did bloom earlier last month, um, but it got tacked by aphids, so I had to trim the bloom stalk back and just wait for new growth. So this plant was repotted um, when I first got it in 2020, and then um, it bloomed the year after, and it bloomed this year. So I already had uh, two years of blooms. And looking at the uh, way this pot is positioned, the new growth will probably be out of the pot. So it's due for um, a repotting. So when I see new growth, it's gonna go into a new pot. Um, currently it's potted up in small bark mix with some perlite and I think that's doing fine. So I'm gonna probably repeat that same um, media for the plant and um, it will continue to do fine. As for the larger plant, um, this is more similar to the Tenebrosum. The flowers themselves also take after the Tenebrosa parent. Uh, it has kind of a longer tubular um, lip and uh, the flower shape is less star-like and more of that tenebrosum kind of wide petaled look. Both of these plants have really deep saturation. They bloomed last year and this one looks like it's starting a new growth so I don't think it's going to bloom till either later in the season or maybe early next year. This plant grows a little slower than the previous one but it also has two growths. So it has one that's growing quite quickly and then one that's just appeared in the past uh, couple of days. So this plant also is not as um, light tolerant as the other one. As you can see, some of the leaves got sunburned uh, pretty badly. So this one prefers a little bit more uh, shade than the other one. And um, it'll be interesting to just kind of compare these side by side um, for the next couple of years, just to see um, how these plants do and how the environment really affects um, the growth of these plants. And also how much each parent um, affects the growth of this hybrid. The next plant is the Encyclia Phoenicia. This plant bloomed last year and uh, this year it has three new growth. Uh, now last year I crossed this plant with the Lelia Zip and it held a seed pod. And then after the seed pod um, matured, then I removed the spike. Now I think this plant was weakened by having that seed pod because this year's growths are very weak. They're very small and they just don't seem to be that great or as vigorous. So I'm hoping that um, after these ones mature, the next ones will do a lot better. But for now, I'm not really hoping for flowers for this season, um, but I'm just hoping that this plant recovers. Also, I noticed that this plant definitely needs um, a more shaded location than where it is currently. Um, if you look at the leaves, they're not green anymore. They're pretty much yellow with um, 
a ring of purple around the edges and that's definitely not a good sign. Some may say that it has a nutrient deficiency and then it needs um, more magnesium, but I gave all of these plants um, an Epsom salt supplement at the beginning of the growing season to see if any of the plants were green upped. Um, this one did not. Um, I So it's definitely not a nutrient issue, it's probably a light issue. So if I can tone down the light for this plant, I think it'll be a lot happier and it'll grow a lot better. Also, it needs a lot more water than I'm giving it. So it has a little bit of wrinkle on the bulbs, but I think it just needs to recover. And um, next year or the year after, I think then this plant will be in a really great shape. Now the next plant is the Cattleya Mariba Tiger. Now this one is a spotted um, Cattleya and it's very similar to the Schleriana, which has uh, some of the Schleriana in it. So this plant grew quite vigorously and it just looks like it's growing bigger and stronger every year. Now last year's growth, it did try to bloom, but snails ate the flowers. So I wasn't actually able to see um, what the flowers look like. And I'm hopeful that um, this year's new growth will be able to grow and bloom and then I can see the flowers then. Supposedly this plant really likes a lot of high light, but um, looking at the leaves, I think it's telling me a different story. So looking at the uh, most mature growth, you can see that the flowers are, you can see the leaves are um, really heavily spotted purple and they're kind of folded in on itself. So usually the Cattleya leaves are like splayed out and open and I think that's how they get like a lot of their photosynthetic um, energy but because it's just so bright, it's kind of cupped in on itself. So I think this plant would do a little bit better with slightly less light. It is interesting to see the leaf morphology change as uh, the environmental factors affect it. So I'm hoping that the new growth this time, I'll have a little less light um, given to it so that um, the leaves can actually open up properly. This plant was recently repotted. So I think I just timed it right before the growing season, like late, uh, maybe like, two months ago. I really want to see the flowers, so I'm hoping that um, we'll get some this year. Also, this plant did get quite sunburned. A couple of the spots, a couple of the leaves are missing from this bifolia cattleya because basically the leaves just turned completely black and I didn't want to cause an infection or I didn't want an infection to start, so I just uh, trimmed off the leaves at that point. And the ones that didn't, they remained. And even though it just looks pretty terrible, um, I think the plant will still survive, but I just know it definitely needs a lot less light than I think. Now, the last plant is the Cattleya um, Leopoldii. And this is um, one of my favorite Cattleya species. I think it looks really cool with this like ball of spotted flowers. Um, and this is the only plant that I've had in the past two years um, that didn't bloom. So I don't think this one is mature enough. Usually Leopoldii are really tall and skinny. And so I think it takes a while for it to really mature. I recently repotted this plant maybe two, three months ago as well. And I think it's just the sweet spot because um, the new growth has come out, new roots will be emerging soon. And I think it's just, um, really doing well. I think sometimes um, repotting cattleyas is tricky because if you get it at the wrong time of year, then they don't really grow roots well. But for these plants, they've all been really vigorous. So um, I haven't really had an issue with the repots. There is, uh, this plant also can do with a slightly less light um, and a little bit more shade. It does have a few sunburn spots, but it's not as serious as the Mariba Tiger or even the Lelia Zip. So um, this one kind of has in between position. So overall, after two years of growing these Cattleyas, I think there is a lot of things I have learned. Uh, the main thing I learned is that Cattleyas do love light, but they don't need direct sunshine. And so I will have to uh, take down or add some shade netting to just kind of cut the light a little bit. Probably 25% or 30% shade cloth would be just fine to take the edge off. The location where the Cattleyas are gets really sunny, really hot. It's like the hottest and sunniest place that I have. So I thought it'd be perfect for these plants. So it's a little bit too much for these particular orchids. So I think just by cutting the light a little bit, um, the plants will just do that much better. So these plants are potted up in a traditional mix of bark and perlite, and that's been working out for me fine. Um, I did use a little bit larger bark in some of the plants, but I think that um, I don't really need to because um, these plants dry out so fast, I have to water them constantly in the summertime to keep them hydrated. So I think by having a smaller, finer bark will just work fine for me. And even I might even have to go moss at this point uh, just to keep these plants hydrated so I don't use too much water. 
but um, that will happen probably later uh, when I need to repot these plants. But for now, um, the bark mix does fine. Also when repotting, uh, the Lelia Zip, the larger one, um, I wasn't really a fan of repotting this plant because it looks like it's growing kind of like in a straight linear fashion. And I don't really have a pot that does that well. Um, when I put it in a round pot, I think um, it's just too much media for the plants. So like when I did that with some other Cattleyas that I have, they just seem to struggle because it's just too much moisture for the plant all at once. So instead, I'm kind of doing this pot next to a pot method. So you just kind of add a second pot right in front. So it's like two pots put together, I taped it to the side and I filled it with media. And so it can kind of walk into that pot in a linear fashion and um, it kind of saves me the trouble of like repotting the plant because it kind of walks inside the plant and takes over on its own or um, the cattleyas that tend to kind of grow in a straight line. Um, that would be fine for me. I don't really care about the aesthetics of it at the moment and I'm not taking it to a show. So um, just having it this way is just kind of, I guess, a lazy way of repotting, but it seems to work for me. And I know that the new growth are slowly gonna climb, the roots will slowly climb into that pot and it'll be fine. So that's the update on my Cattleyas that I got from Sunset Valley Orchids. They are very vigorous and I am kind of surprised because um, these three inch uh, plants that I got two years ago have definitely filled out the four inch pots and growing beyond that. So they definitely grow very fast and um, they definitely, and they bloomed within a year, uh, except for the Leopoldii. But um, overall, I'm really happy with um, the Cattleyas that I have. They're healthy, they're vigorous, they bloom, and um, they have very deep saturated colors when I do see the blooms. So if you grow Cattleyas, I'd love to know how you take care of them. If you've noticed um, some cool insights or tips on how to grow them better, um, please let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn more about Cattleyas and the ones that I grow, please click on the playlist and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!